All right, now that we've got the foundation for our game in place, let's address the implementation for the player class. Now, the player class is going to be very short, and this is due to the fact that we already have some input code in place. Earlier in the behavior demo project, we had put together the gamepad behavior. So we already have a behavior that can be assigned to an actor that will take input from a gamepad controller. Now we need to do one thing in addition to this behavior. The behavior itself only controls the direction. So if we were to use that behavior by itself, we would have a player we, we could control, but the player could never stop moving. In this video, we are going to augment this behavior with some code that will allow us to speed up, slow down, and stop simply using the range of the controller thumbstick itself. So to begin, we're going to jump into the player class and we are going to begin first by adding a using statement. We do need to gain access to the types in the input namespace, so we will add in a new using directive for framework.input. All right, now we can turn our attention to the player class. The first thing we'll add is going to be a field, and this field is going to store the maximum player speed. We'll use the actual position of the thumbstick along with this speed to decide on what the final speed of the actor should be. So once again, this is going to be a float called player speed. Now we're going to adjust the constructor for player to require that a player speed be given when the player is created. So we are going to add a float parameter that is also called player speed. Then inside of the constructor, we're going to make sure that this field gets assigned, and we are also going to establish the behavior that the player is going to use. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our player speed field, this dot player speed, and make sure we copy over the value currently in the player speed parameter. Now we need to establish the behavior so that we can start reading gamepad input. So looking at this player, we'll say this dot behavior list dot add, then we will here inline instantiate a new behavior gamepad class, or rather object. So to this behavior gamepad, we need to specify a weight. We'll give a weight of 0.5F. Then we can close off the creation of the behavior, end off the add operation, and that takes care of our behavior. Now we can move on and override the update method for player. Because again, this behavior will take care of setting our direction. Now we need to calculate our speed. So we will override the update method. And inside of update, we'll make sure that we retain the call to base.update, since that's what's going to allow our actual application of the behavior itself back in the base actor class. So let's move that down and we'll do a few operations before the base, uh, base version of update is run. What we'll do is we'll grab the input vector that is represented by the left thumbstick on the controller for player one. To do this, we'll make a vector two variable. We'll call this input vector, and we will set it by grabbing the state of the gamepad controller and directly accessing the left thumbstick. To get the state, we'll take our game, uh, excuse me, our gamepad class. We will call the getState method. We'll pass in a player index of one. Then we can immediately take the resulting return, which is going to be a gamepad state. From the state, we can look at the thumbsticks property. And from thumbsticks, we can grab the left thumbstick. So that will copy the vector represented by the left thumbstick and store it in the input vector variable. Using this vector, we can now calculate the speed. We'll do this by measuring the length of the vector and then multiplying that by our player speed variable. Once we perform this calculation, we'll immediately store the result into the actor's own speed. So this will go back into the behavior system and be used appropriately. So we'll set this dot speed to be equal to input vector dot length times our player speed, which is this dot player speed. And here we can see why we need a separate field rather than simply changing speed itself. 
and as player speed really represents the maximum speed that a player can move. Speed represents the current speed, which may be different or less than the maximum if the thumbstick has been pushed all the way in its uh, full capacity. We're also leveraging the fact that input vector dot length is going to return a unit vector. That's what will allow us to multiply against player speed to get a full range of zero to the value set in player speed. All right, with these two methods in place, that's all we need to do in the player class. So let's switch back over to our game scene here in the scene game class and instantiate a player. We'll scroll down to the build scene method. We'll jump in right below our node loading and we will address the player field. Player will be set to a new instance of player. The player class requires that we specify a player speed. So we will simply pass in the player speed field from the game class. The next thing we'll do with our new player is we will position it in the center of the level. So we'll take our player, we will set its position to be equal to a new vector 2 with a pixel value of 400 by 300. So this will place us at the center of our map. At this point, let's go ahead and jump in and test things out. Instead of our game now, we can see a green arrow texture being drawn in the center of the map. And if we grab the gamepad controller, we can take this actor and move it around the screen by simply moving the left thumbstick. So you can see that we're able to turn and navigate throughout the level. The turning part is handled by the behavior itself, but you'll also notice that we can control the speed of this actor. If we let go of the thumbstick, the actor will simply stop. If we provide a little bit of motion, we can move slowly, or if we push the thumbstick to its extent, we can move at our maximum speed of five. So this allows us to combine the ideas of speed and direction inside of a single player actor. All right, with the player actor in place, that takes care of one of our gameplay actors. So at this point, it's now time to move on and that'll wrap up this video.